to hurting my hand yesterday. Trying to formulate a plan or what I can do to stay active. What I can get away with with fishing. One thing I can do and enjoy is shelling. I've been trying to find some of these olive shells. I've had pretty good success. I'll show you some of my best shells. But it's something to do. I'd rather be fishing right now, but I'm going to let Vicky sleep late and we're going to reevaluate my finger situation. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's a good looking shell. Wasn't really what I'm out here looking for, but I'll take it. Alright, so these are what I'm looking for. These little olive shells. I don't find these very much uh, at all. I found a really full size gray one up at Myrtle before I got down here, so it kind of put me in the mood for them, but every the one, all the ones I'm finding out here is tan. These are about half the size of some of the ones that I found. There's an even smaller one there, but that's kind of what I'm looking for today is these things. I like to find some big ones fully intact. All right, when you find the shells real thick like that, you got, you know, a pile like this, you kind of got to take your time and go through them. And I, I stepped up to this point and I actually found two of what I was looking for. Um, I got one right there. Looks intact. I got another one right there that's got some good size to it. And then there's another shell over here that I'm interested in. And I haven't even went out through yonder yet looking. That's what I'm looking for. I do like finding these. These are nice as well. That's nice. Very pretty. Alright, Vicky done ha hollered at me on the radio and told me to start getting this back. And I haven't done it yet, so I better get going. Yeah, I, I knew that's where it was happening. I've seen some videos posted just in the last day or two, and yeah, it looked like that's where they were at. They're still there. But yeah. The thing with that end, yeah. Well, but the, hey, it was nice meeting you yeah. with Aaron, by the way. Yeah, Aaron, Brad, Brad Hodge. Brad, nice yeah, to it's nice to meet you too, sir. Good luck to you. Love the truck, yeah, thank you, man. Absolutely. All right. That's pretty wild because I caught that grouper right out there. All right, so this is where we were at the other day. Had such good luck. It was uh, a lot of fun out here. We just had to return. Conditions are a lot different. It's really nice to look out there and see a see a rainbow out there to start off. That's pretty cool. Vicky out here fishing hard, man. Uh, beautiful day. It's probably the coolest day we've had. We got a nice little breeze. Um, so yeah, we're really enjoying it. We only got a couple poles out. A couple others rigged up, but we're just chilling.
good looking fish. I don't know what that is. Pilcher or greeny or what that is, but they're big ones. These pilchers are so big. Ah, something just busted on them over there. These pilchers are so big I had to come back for more. Some of these are much smaller, but still some big ones. I tell ya, I can't hardly leave these giant ass pilchers. I just spooked a snook. I'd, I'd quit fishing and left because I hadn't seen any snook busting on anything. And when I just tiptoed over to get some more bait, the snook was laying there. It was not very big though, maybe 18 inches. But by God, when it saw me, it was gone like a bullet. So I've decided to spin the and there's just bait jumping everywhere in here but i decided to spend my last uh morning you know the last day here uh fishing some of these little coves i can't get over the just sheer amount of bait that's busting in here i'm just off the indian river uh in a little old uh creek that feeds a creek and uh got a couple lines out with giant pilchards on them that i'm just going to kind of watch while i sling some different plugs i mean, just bait piled in here there's a manatee just right there just came up there's a feller in a in a micro skiff a little further up i talked to that was videotaping three baby manatee off the front of his micro skiff that was pretty cool I don't know if this is a tarpon or a snook, but it's one or the other. It jumped three times before I got the camera on. Oh, that's just jump broke me right there. like a snook bent my hook that looked like a big snook lord that was crazy all right my adrenaline is pumping sure it's a tarpon he's got me wrapped bad he's got me wrapped bad he's probably done broke me yeah yeah he broke me tarpon right there this is crazy that couldn't be hooked i mean it, just now it just doubled over and just zzz, zzz. i don't understand how they cannot be hooked it's a circle hook situation it's crazy i wonder if the didn't have something on or something pumped it twice i do have something on there ah hard head I'm say it pumped it twice. It went hard like before. There's other two hook sets I had on the silver. I just went and got the big poles and rigged them up. But the other two hook sets, hell, the way in which I knew I had a fish on was because they were jumping. I saw them jump before I saw the poles bent. All right, let me get this thing unhooked.
Tell you what, I just caught the biggest mangrove snapper you ever did see. And I learned. And I'm always learning down here. And these mangroves, these shells, razor sharp. Absolutely razor sharp. But this is definitely not a keeper. So he's gonna go back. See the fish. What the hell it is. Another group. Second Goliath group. I had a heck of a time getting him out of that bag on. He went right into that tree. He's hooked good. Like in the corner of the mouth, so should be able to get him released really good. I knew I had a fish on just because of slack in my line. He must have bit it and then... And then, uh... Swam into the tree. Dang, he's hard to hold on to. <laughs> a second Goliath grouper, not near as big as the first. This is a true baby. It's hard to believe that this creature right here can get four to 800 pounds. It's crazy. I get him on his way. Hey, go, buddy. Hey, go, you're like, boom, he's gone. All right, everybody. So uh, I'm getting ready to do a, a catch and cook on a couple snapper. This is a keeper mangrove snapper that I caught. It's 11 inches. So uh, going to not gonna get a biggest fillet out of it, but I've got another snapper in here, a mutton snapper that uh, is going to be a, a lot bigger. So with the two of them, we should have enough for a good meal. All right. So these are the cleaned up fillets. Yeah, that snapper right there. Um, I, I felt like with the snapper that we had, I did we didn't have quite enough. So I went ahead and added just a little bit of redfish to it. You know, a couple of really good fillets from redfish. Um, so with all that, that should be plenty enough for a meal for us. Um, I'm just using uh, Louisiana beer batter with a little bit of Everglades seasoning. Nothing fancy. Um, and we're just going to mix all that up. And roll them all up in there really good. I'm pretty simple when it comes to cooking. I like to let the fish speak for themselves, uh, especially with this snapper. I mean, uh, uh, redfish is one of my favorite to eat, but uh, I'm really looking forward to this snapper. I've never had it fresh caught like that. Um, it's kind of a bucket list thing for me, actually, to catch some sna uh, snapper and actually be able to do a, a catch and cook with it. But as you can see, there's not much to a legal size, barely legal size mangrove snapper. Don't have a lot. A lot to it but uh but anyway everything's rolled up into flour good so we'll get some get some oil going in the skillet and get ready to start all right there going now frying them up all right there it is uh all done up uh we had some leftover blooming onion from outback so we'll use that as a side item we also got some corn on the cob um this little piece of snapper here And man, that is good. I'm um, really glad to be able to share this with Victoria. Um, my last evening here, be able to snuggle up on the couch and eat some uh, fresh caught and cooked fish. Uh, it's been a really good vacation.